astronomer Volker Brahm is using a supercomputer to create an image of the first star ever formed. We can input into the supercomputers all the laws of physics from, as we say, first principles. We can put in the initial conditions, because initial conditions is what we see here. There are no missing pieces. We have all the laws of physics that describe the behavior of these basic ingredients. And at that point, we set up the computer, um, and then we let it go. The scale of the calculation seems impossible. To model the behavior of vast clouds of primordial hydrogen gas, trillions of hydrogen atoms, one interaction at a time, and to ask the question, will they form a star? At first you might think this is hopeless. How do we get uh, things like stars out of this? But what really then kicks in is the force of gravity. And the force of gravity has an infinite reach. Um, it reaches over far stretches of the universe, um, millions of light years. So the force of gravity, in a way, is a very patient force. Tiny fluctuations left over from the Big Bang meant some regions were ever so slightly more dense than others, allowing gravity to work its magic. Gravity would very, very slowly act to clump matter together. Certain regions of space where then the density of primordial stuff is larger than the rest. And then what would happen is millions of years, millions of years would create and attract more and more material. Eventually, Gravity would pull such a vast collection of atoms so incredibly close together under such extreme pressure that it could trigger nuclear fusion and a star could be born. But even as gravity is pulling the gas atoms closer together, there's another force trying to push them apart. And it comes together and we compress gas then it also is heated up. And at some point, the heat will basically have random motion, and the random motion will uh, basically prevent the gravity from condensing the gas any further. The more that gravity squeezes inwards, the more the gas heats up and pushes outwards. It's a stalemate. And then the important question is, can this gas, this primordial gas, can this get rid of the, of the heat? What tipped the balance in favor of gravity were a few chance encounters between hydrogen atoms. Very rarely, uh, something very dramatically happened. You have then two hydrogen atoms, and they meet and they form hydrogen molecules. And crucially, a pair like this are able to absorb a tiny bit of heat in a way that a lone atom can't. This is the key process for uh, the entire end of the cosmic dark ages. The gas can cool, gravity can take over, and eventually creates conditions that are so extreme in terms of temperature and density that you can trigger nuclear fusion and can eventually form out of this material stars. The first star is born. The first light of the universe is created. The gas has collapsed for millions of years into the center of the system, and now for the first time in cosmic history, we see the moment of first light, the moment that the first star formed. After a hundred million years, 
This was how the Dark Ages finally came to an end. The first stars were giants, a hundred times or more the mass of the sun. That has dramatic consequences because massive stars have a very different life, a much more violent life than the kind of low mass star that the sun is. They would be 20 times hotter. Shining ultraviolet blue. 10 million times more luminous than the sun. Volker Brahms supercomputer has given us an image of the first stars ever to shine in the darkness of space. The one picture that really uh, captures this uh, metaphysical moment of first light, then it would be like this a supercomputer frame that um, shows the very first star. It's a realistic image of the first light from the first ever star. Let's patch it in just at the end of the cosmic dark ages, because this is when it happened. It shows the moment when, from the impenetrable fog of the dark ages, light finally dawned on the universe. Soon after the first star formed, a few million years later, another star formed somewhere else. And then the process accelerated. After a hundred million years of darkness, lights were coming on across the universe. It grew up exponentially, very quickly. Within tens of millions of years, there were plenty of stars filling up the universe. This was the era that so many astronomers have searched for, the cosmic dawn. Cosmic Dawn would have been spectacular. New galaxies were forming out of darkness. This age of enlightenment was a very dynamic period of time. These great furnaces start forging the more useful ingredients of the universe. All of a sudden, it gets interesting. For the first time, new elements are being made. They take hydrogen, turn it into helium. Helium gets combined to make carbon, and we go to oxygen and silicon. Deep in their hearts, the first giant stars began the transformation of matter, producing the heavy elements necessary for life. 